my dear friends, we are delighted to have you participate in this Mass of the Passion of the Lord. As we celebrate the Lord's Passion today, we ask that through His Passion and Cross, the grace for healing, the grace for comfort, the grace for strength may be given to all of his people that the world that honors the savior of the world of this other its savior today may also experience the saving power of his presence among us this mass is going to be offered for all of you i pray for your families wherever you are at this time i pray that god may be with you and that God may strengthen, that God may heal, that God may bring you peace. I also pray for our sick at this time, all those who have been sickened by this virus, we pray for them. Pray that the good Lord, the bread of the Holy Spirit, may breathe fresh life into their lungs, that God may strengthen every one of their failing and ailing organs, that they may find the healing power of his mercy. We pray for our doctors, pray for our nurses, pray for our first responders, pray for our police, pray for our military, pray for everyone dedicated to caring for the sick, our lab tech, pray for our researchers, medical researchers, pray for our EMS, pray and ask that God may continually protect them and their families as they dedicate themselves in caring for our sick. We pray for our leaders. Pray and ask that God may be with them at this time of great peril. That their intellect and their reasoning and their power of decision may be spot on and without error. So that whatever they do may bring out the best outcome for all of God's people. And I'll give you a minute to bring your own intentions right now before God. You may type or just speak them in your heart. That God will bless you. Our opening hymn will be, I am the holy vine. I am the holy vine. I am the holy vine which God my Father tends. Each branch that yields no fruit, my Father cuts away. Each fruitful branch he prunes with care to make it yield abundant fruit. I am the holy vine, and you, my branches, are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole world the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and his resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps. 
so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may live, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. If you have palms, wherever you are, you may want to raise them that we may bless them. We do have palm branches here on the altar. Increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, O Lord, and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you, that they may today hold high these branches to hail Christ in his triumph. We ask, O God, that you bless these branches and that you sanctify them with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King, of exalt the King in exaltation, may reach the now Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered, and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the fowl of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them. And they sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and stood them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we will now go to the opening prayer that begins the Mass. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so marry a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading Our first reading today is from the prophet Isaiah The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear and have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard, my face 
I did not shield from buffets and spittle. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My Lord, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evil doers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them. And for my, my vestures, they cast lots. Let you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to my aid. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will praise you. You will fear the Lord, praise him, all the descendants of Jacob. Give glory to him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. We will read the longer version of the Gospel of St. Matthew. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, his disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to celebrate the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I will celebrate the Passover with my disciples. 
The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it's not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas his betrayer said in reply, Surely it's not I, Lord. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, he sang the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shared on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day I drink it anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is possible that this cup pass without me drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed the third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priest and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, 
do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its shed, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how will the scriptures be fulfilled which says that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following from a distance, as far as the high priest caught here, and going inside he sat down with his servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I will destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us on the oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his ropes and said, he has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They all said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat at his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, one of the maids came over to him and said, You two were with Jesus the Galilean, but he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were, with, who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. A little later, a bystander came over and said to him, said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, 
They used it to buy the potter's field at the burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even to this day, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man's, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and he questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he had accused, he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of God, the, the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wish. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent words, sent him a message. Have nothing to do with this righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? They said to him, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw what he was, what was, that he was not succeeding at all, but that the riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers and the governors, and the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him of his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak over him, weaving a crown of thorns. They placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when, he had, and they, when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to, be, to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, a place which means a place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were also crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourselves if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest and the scribes and elders mocked him and said to him, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe him. He trusted in God, 
Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onwards, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to, to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on the reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah, Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried, cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Let us kneel. Let us rise. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening and they said truly this was the son of God there were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee when it was evening, there came a rich man from Alimatea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn on a rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained there, remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, So, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days, I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, God, it, The God is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal on the stone and setting the guard. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as we enter Holy Week, we as a country are entering a different front in this war. We are in a war right now. We are in a war with an invisible and dangerous enemy. I learned growing up, if you don't know your enemy very well, take him seriously. Take him more seriously than you normally should until you know his capability. This is a dangerous enemy, and we must take this enemy very seriously. Now, in a war, 
There are many battles. There are several battles in a war. And it, it, is, it is normal to win some of the battles and to lose some. In most cases, you might win most of the battles. But it, it's almost impossible to lose, to win all of the battles in a war. To win all of the battles in every front in a war. Based on every statistics that we know for our country, the next week and the week after are going to be difficult battles in this war. We may be on the downside of this battle. We may appear to be losing this battle because of the numbers of persons that we may lose in this battle. And that breaks everyone's heart. Everyone's heart. I have no doubt it breaks the heart even of God. And as we prepare for this very difficult battle, it is a battle of who will win the war. And while it is clear in my mind and in my heart that we may lose this front the next two weeks, we will win this war ultimately. And so I encourage you, wherever you are and listening, that we will overcome. Challenges will be great. We will lose a lot of our loved ones. There will be a lot of crying and grieving. And this reminds me of the birth of Jesus. Remember the birth of Jesus happened. And the people of Israel experienced something similar. In this case, it was a killing of every young child, young male, because they wanted to kill Jesus. And we remember the willing in all of the land. That, that is the image that comes across to my mind as I think about what we are going to experience. And I pray and ask God that his grace may heal our land and may heal the world. However, it is in the context such a great challenge, such a serious challenge to our faith, to our life, that the gospel we just read and the feasts or the solemnity we celebrate comes fully alive. It's something I'd like to reflect with you. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, very soon, very soon, your faith in me will be tested and shaken very soon. Your faith in me will be tested and shaken. And, and as I heard those words, I have heard those words any number of times. But as I heard those words or read those words today, it became clear to me how death can make us question, how grief can make us question, how fear can make us question almost everything we had previously believed, things we took for granted. Many of us have taken our faith for granted. We just believe it's there. We could never, nothing could ever happen to it. It is at a time like this where everything seemed to be falling apart in our own eyes. It said sin to be falling apart. That people of faith can see that though things appear to be falling apart, God is arranging everything. Even our pain, our losses, and our grief, he's arranging all into place. It takes, it's hard to see that. That's why the letter to the Romans tells us or reminds us we live by faith not by sight. By sight, we are going to see a lot of death. By faith, we know that death isn't the end for a Christian. Death is only the beginning of a new life with Jesus. 
by, by, by sight, we are going to see a lot of grief. By faith, we will know that yes, at night comes grief, but with dawn comes rejoicing, that there will be rejoicing for all of God's people. That's only by faith. And so Jesus says to us today, your faith will be tested. During these next few days, or few weeks, your faith in him will be tested. And he was saying this, just so we remember, just so we prepare, because it will happen. It happened to the apostles. The Bible said they fled. It can happen to you too. It can happen to me. It can happen to anyone. Don't question that. I didn't say, Jesus said, it says, your faith in me will be tested and shaken. Pray, pray that your faith may be able to stand the test. Those were the words of the Lord himself. So now that we have plenty of time to pray, we need to pray. Unfortunately, at times like this, even prayer becomes difficult. You realize with the apostles, when Jesus steps away from them to pray, they were so overcome with pain and grief and fear and every, every ravaging emotion that it was impossible for them to even pray. Three times Jesus comes back from praying and finds them sleeping. Now, maybe you're not sleeping. Maybe you're just there scared or just there unable to or, or freezing or frozen or immobilized. But there is power in prayer. And prayer means us being in conversation with God. So I encourage you, be in greater conversation with the Almighty God. And prayer can come in many forms. You could choose to read the Bible. You could choose to sing. You could choose to pray the rosary. You could choose to attend Mass every day as we do, you know, in this virtual space. You could choose to serve others. You could choose to do anything. But by every means, pray. Make that your prayer. Pray that you not fall into temptation, the Bible says. So if you are struggling to pray at this time, it makes sense. The apostles struggled the same way. But struggle doesn't mean I don't do it. I give it up. If I give it up, that's me losing. Yes, it's, it's okay to, to, to acknowledge I'm struggling. But don't quit. And this reminds me of the motto of my last unit. Maintain the line. Never quit. You must maintain your spiritual line in this battle, in this war. Don't lose ground to the devil or to the, this enemy. You must maintain your ground and you must never quit. doesn't matter how hard this battle gets because ultimately we will win this war. We may lose this battle in the next coming weeks, but I have faith in God that we will overcome or at the end of this war. There is something else that struck me in this gospel that is going to be the faith, the faith of many of us in these next coming weeks. Scripture said, when it was evening, there came a man, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself was a disciple of Jesus, though a, a secret one for fear of the Jews. He was the one who came, took the body of Jesus, cleaned the body of Jesus, and buried him. Last week, I lost one of my first patients to this disease, and she was only 27. And I pray that God may rest her and that God may bring healing to her family. But it was when she passed away and the fact that her family could not be with her. And the fact that the family could not even see her. And even when she was taken to the morgue, the family could not be present. Even though they were in the hospital. That was the first time this gospel came alive for me. Wow, the Lord Jesus experienced his family, his friends experience about the same thing. That when the Lord died, you would expect that his mother will be dead. He will be at, she will be at the funeral. 
you will expect that his best friends will be there. You will expect that his, his uh, family will be present to, be, to take charge of his funeral. No one was there. Not his mother. Not his family. Not his disciples. No one. Except this unknown, because no one knew Joseph was his disciple, except this unknown disciple who shows up and then buries Christ. And I'm like, wow, did Jesus just prefigure for us something that is going to happen to us at this time where many people will not be able to attend the funerals of their loved ones or may not be there at their bedside at their dying side wow but that's going to be the fate of many of us it will break our hearts i'm sure it broke the heart of mary so she understands if our hearts are broken that your child will die and you are not there. That your child will be buried. And you are not there. You need someone to show you where he was buried. So maybe that's going to be your fate. It will break your heart. But I hope you can look to the disciples. And look to our blessed mother. And imagine. How did they deal with this? How did they handle this? And imagine Jesus dying all alone. With no one except two thieves, one on his left, one on his right. In this case, your loved one may die by the bedside of a nurse or a doctor that he never knew. But whatever happens, how they died doesn't change anything. The way Jesus died without family or he was buried did not stop his resurrection. And so, Death, the process of dying and the nature of death may be different at this time for a lot. But my hope and my trust and my belief is that it doesn't matter how our loved ones die, whether they die with some stranger by their bedside, they know that we love them. They know that we will meet again. And on the other side, it is one thing. It is Jesus that determines the last, the final outcome. He alone has the final word. And I know he said he is a resurrection. And I know our loved ones, even if they die alone, that they will die with Jesus. That Jesus will be there to minister to them at that last moment of their last breath. And I hope that will give us comfort because when Jesus was on the cross and cried, God was present. And God is going to be present with our loved ones, even when they die alone. I pray, wherever you are at this time, that God may preserve you from death and from sickness and from harm. But should anyone in your family be impacted, trust God. Trust God. God loves you very much. Let us now profess our creed. I believe in one Lord, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was in kind of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for our Holy Father, the Pope. We pray for our bishops. Pray for leaders of all world religions. 
pray for leaders of, of churches and denominations all around the world that God may help us think of caring and protecting our people at this time, praying and sacrificing for them, that God may show us all mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of nations, that nations and leaders may come together and recognize that we share this common enemy and that this enemy is out against the entire human race. And it's only concerted effort and working together, team building and teamwork that will give us an edge over this enemy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors. Pray for our nurses. Pray for EMS workers. Pray for our police. Pray for our military. Pray for our researchers, medical researchers at this time. Pray for all those on the front lines. Pray, Almighty God, that you may continue to bless their hands, bless their hearts, bless their care and their service, that everything they do at this time may bring comfort, healing, and strength to our sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick ones. Pray especially for those in ICU whose condition is critical. That you, you O Lord, May send your Holy Spirit the bread of life to breathe into those lungs and strengthen the muscles of those lungs, O oh God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Pray especially for people we know. Pray for people who have died all around the world. Pray that God may grant them rest, that God may bring healing to their loved ones, that God may bring comfort to their, city, their communities. And that God may bring hope in this darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are sick from other diseases. Those who feel forgotten at this time. Who feel like they cannot even access their medical health and treatments. That God may also be with them. And that God may help them know his love, his healing, and his mercy. We pray for pregnant mothers who are expecting for those who have just been delivered of their own children, that God may protect them and protect their children as he did our blessed mother and his son Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of you wherever you are at this time. We pray that you may bring your needs to be before God on this altar. Lift up your heart. Ask God for whatever it is that you need. That may God minister to your needs. May God reach out and bless you and bless your home and bless everyone in your home. And may you know that you are children of the Almighty God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We end by asking our Blessed Mother to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Over the bread we bring, your word is spoken. Make it become forth our healing Lord. Take all our daily toils, planting our hearts for soil. Take all this tired and spoil. Each hopeful dream, the chances we have missed, the graces we resist, both in your Eucharist, take unto thee. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of the man has become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we may not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, O Lord, your sons and daughters who have died from this disease. We beg you, dear God, show them your mercy and your rest. Bring comfort to their families. Remember all those who are still sick and are really, really sick at this time. May your spirit with wellness into their lives, O oh God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. My dear friends, may the peace of God, that is beyond every understanding, be with you in your homes in your lives, with your loved ones, especially those who may have died at this time. From me to you, peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are participating in virtual space and are unable to physically receive the Eucharist, may the Lord Cover you, cover your families, cover everyone you carry in your heart with his precious blood. And as you seek and desire to receive him spiritually, may he nourish you in spirit, and may the effect be felt in your body, in your heart, and in your mind. May you feel his protection and feel his love deep in your heart. Amen. For our communion hymn, we're going to sing Sweet Sacrament Divine. Sweet Sacrament Divine. Sweet Sacrament Divine, hide in thy earthly home. Laura, thy lowly shrine with soplans hearts we come Jesus to thee our voice we raise in songs of love and heartfelt praise sweet song Coming divine, sweet song, coming divine, sweet song, coming of rest, out from the ocean's roar, within thy shelter blessed. Soon may we reach the shore. Save us for still the tempest rage. Safe less 
we sink beneath the waves. Sweet soft crumbings of rest. Sweet soft crumbings of rest. Let us pray. Nourished with this sacred gift, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through, through the death of your Son, you have brought us hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where your call leads. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for participating in this Passion of the Lord. I pray for you and I will continue to do so every day and I think of you. And please pray for me too. I have not asked, but pray for me too. Um, because um, we constantly are in contact with these patients and I also need your prayers as much as um, I pray for you. And um, finally, uh, this week, this coming week, this week that we're going into, maybe Monday, maybe Monday or Tuesday, I would like to um, do a lecture on grief and loss because that's something we will need. We will need a lot of help with grieving and losing. And when people die, we don't just lose the person who died. That's, yeah, the physical loss. But we lose them in any number of ways. We lose what they brought to our lives. We lose a lot in one single person that dies. So I would like for us to um, get time. I will answer questions during that session. Um, so if you can, um, follow me on Facebook and check and see when that lecture will happen or that discussion will happen. I prefer to call it a discussion when that will happen. Once again, remember, if you forget anything I said today, just remember that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much and I love you too. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the final hymn, we will sing the summons. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? And at me to walk I mean in you and you in me. And at me to walk I mean in you and you in me.